on a scale of one to 10, I give last night's experience a negative 10. Oh, God, that's pretty bad. I'm still mad about it. Welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave, where Kathy, my lovely bride and I, last night we flew into a regional Southwest airport and we rented a car. And originally, this is the car we rented, but originally we just wanted to get a really cheap gas car and uh, just, you know, drive it. But they said they were completely out of gas cars and all they had were EVs. Now, I don't know if that was a bait and switch, but last night was not smooth. We did not have a good time renting this car. The car itself is not bad, but man, oh man, do these rental car companies have something to learn about educating the public about how to actually drive and charge an EV. It's like me as a professional musician, as an educator. A kid comes to me and says, oh, I'd like to play the violin. I go, great, here's your violin. That's it. Yeah, go play it and go give a concert. Go ahead. What yeah, the heck? There's I no mean, training. There's no training. But I think about all the people this must happen to. So I hope that these companies out there, I hope somebody sends this video to someone because I can't be the only one disgusted with the process last night and the lack of education and the lack of help. Let's get into it. All right, Kathy. So we picked up this Polestar 2 last night at Hertz, which is a little bit confusing to me because I rented the car for the weekend. Just quick shot down to Marco for the weekend. And by the way, beautiful, beautiful day today. Gorgeous. Great, great beach day. And out of it. Yeah. So we we got into the airport last night at RSW Regional Southwest in Fort Myers. Very right about, late. Yeah, it was like. 12:30, and and I had rented a car, not paid for it yet, but I had rented a car, reserved a car, it, which uh, from Thrifty, and and I rented the cheapest car you could get. I didn't want to get an EV. We're only down here for just one night, and you know I know you've got off Monday, you're heading back, and I'm I'm going back tomorrow. So we needed to get a car that you could return. So we had to make sure we were both authorized drivers on the car. And, and so when we got to the rental car last night, the, the um, rental car counters, Thrifty was, was, was there. And there was someone checking in, picking up their rental car at Thrifty, which it was like they were closing a mortgage or something because it took forever. Forever. Right? And then yes. so... Now, meanwhile, Thrifty and Dollar were at the same counter. And then next to the counter was Hertz, right down the, right down next to us. Right. And there were these two employees, it was pretty much dead in there, and they were just bantering about, you know, what'd you do over the weekend, last weekend? Oh, that's none of your business. They're going back, but you could hear their whole conversation. The whole thing. And 10 minutes after we got there, all of a sudden, the guy walks up to us and says, oh, we can help you here at Hertz. I said, no, really? I, I said, really? Um, but, but we rented the car from Thrifty. He goes, oh, no, we're all one company. So then I thought to myself, well, wait a minute. This is weird. Like, if you're all one company, why wouldn't you have called me down immediately? Sir, I can take you now. Right. No, they were bantering on personal stuff. So anyway, so this young lady um, took us up at the counter. Now, now I'm dealing with Hertz, and the good news is that I've rented from Hertz my whole life, you know, and I, I like I like Hertz. I think they do a good job. As a matter of fact, when we rented, we rented a Model Y from Hertz when you had your GV60. Remember when they first knocked down the prices on that initial knockdown on the Y, and we're like, oh, let's go buy one. Yes. And we. But but, but I also think we did that for two reasons: to try out the Model Y, and to see what a rental experience. Right. What's like if you want to travel, you get off an airplane, you need a car, maybe I'll rent an electric car. I mean, let's see what that experience is like. Right. And how was that? Experience? It was actually excellent. The, 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 the experience, the first time we rented from Hertz was because we specifically requested to rent an EV. I think it was two weeks before we rented it. They started sending us emails with videos. And as what a matter to of, do? What to do? How to charge it? Where how to, to charge have the best it? EV how to have, experience. Right. How to have the best EV experience? And by the way, 
renting a Tesla is easy because if you're going to go charge that car, it's easy. You, you just plug and plug and charge it. So now, you're saying even for a novice, someone who's never been in an electric car, yeah, Tesla is undoubtedly the easiest. Yeah, no, way to it, go, it is. But how helpful was it that Hertz reached out proactively? That was great. No, oh. we were all set up. The, we were ready. The only funny thing that happened when we rented that Hertz Model Y was that the the woman at the check-in counter who was very helpful she, she wouldn't she, she she wouldn't come on Not camera last night's people well wait previously. take take you calm down there woman take it easy so what happened was she told us I'll never forget this don't let the state of charge get below 9% and I'm like 9%? 9% like what's that magic number and I told her, well, I'm definitely testing that, right? And we did. I took it down to 0% or 1%. No issues. I think they were just trying to... I think because I thought that was good advice, though. Yeah, if you have a person you know, don't know how to gauge it, yeah. know that 9%. Not, you know, yeah. want to find but I mean, charge. 9% is a funny number to say rather than 10%. 10%. You know, like, you know, 10, 25, 50, whatever. <laughs> Nine percent. It just like cracked me up. So anyway, so our first experience in renting an electric car was a good one with Hertz. But last night we had no intention of renting an electric car. So now oh, we, you had put in for the cheapest, just a little just, economy car, yeah, just, just, not the, really going just the cheapest just car possible. So now after waiting for a long time, we finally get over to the Hertz rental car. And the woman says, unfortunately, we're out of any gas cars. We have no more gas cars. And she said, zero. we're going to put you into an EV. And I'm like, great. And you're, wait like, a minute. What? What, no. kind, what kind of EV? And, and she goes, well, it's going to be a Polestar. So I said, Polestar 1? Or Polestar 2. Or, and she, and, and she, she's Polestar 1. She goes, no, it's a Polestar 2. So I said, okay. No, so she didn't know. She called to ask. She called to ask. Right, right. I knew it wasn't going to be a Polestar 1. I mean, they have them in LA at LAX, but here in regional southwest Florida, probably not. But I, that would have been cool to get a Polestar 1, which is DC fast charging plug-in hybrid car. Like Kyle has one of those. So anyway. Stay on the point. Yeah. So, so now you say... Polestar, Dave, I'm no, not. Polestar. So, so I said, well, what state of charge are you going to deliver the car to us at? Just back up. Okay. Even before we agreed to the electric car. Yeah. And all the bantering back and forth about we did not put in for an electric car. No. We just want a little gas car. We're sorry. We don't have any more. In fact, I'm not even sure she said she was sorry. We don't have any more cars. Yeah. And then at one point, I think she did offer up a minivan. Uh, when, no, I'd rather walk than take a minivan. I love minivans. I know you do. You used to get them when we'd go to Disney. Yeah, right? it was like Disney. No, I, I don't like minivans. Mini, so, so. so then I was like, fine, if it's between an electric car and a minivan, we'll go with the electric car. Right. So then we start talking about, all right, it's going to be a Polestar 2. She said it's going to be delivered to you with at least a 70% state of charge. And you are going to have to deliver the car back to us with 70% state of charge or higher. And if you don't, we're going to charge you $35. Even if you bring it back at 65%, charge the $35. Right. So, so you looked at me and you said, does that mean I have to go to EA? Right, because... Right, because it's a CCS car. I'm the one returning the car. Right, you have to return the car. So... I said, yeah, honey, you're going to have to go to EA. So I said to the woman at Hertz, where should she charge the car? And she said, well, what you do is you need to go online and download the ChargePoint app. So I said, ChargePoint app? <laughs> Char what, what, okay. And, and that will show Kathy where she can charge the car? Yes, that will show where she can charge the car. Do you know where she can charge? No, I don't know. Okay. So then, Kathy, you said, well, I know in this area where I can charge a Tesla. So I said, do you have any Teslas? She says, yes, we have Model Ys and Model 3s. So we said, okay, let's get a Model let's Y. Get a y. All right. 
Then she said, we're out of Model Ys. I said, okay, how about a Model 3? Model 3 is fine. So we, so, we, so we did all the paperwork for the Model 3. And then look at the contract. And the price of the car for three days was $290. And I said, wait a minute. Why, why am I paying $290 for this car? She says, oh, the Tesla, we charge $111 more than the Polestar 2 because the Polestar 2 is a compact car and the Tesla Model 3 is a larger car. Can I argue that point? Well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this is a bigger car. This is a bigger car. This is a bigger car. And not only that, the, the Teslas they have are all LFP, or rear wheel drives. This is more expensive. This is more expensive than that by far. So. But the general public will they, say, oh, Tesla, oh, Tesla. Right. So. What's a Polestar? So. I said, okay, $111 more for a Tesla. I said, Kathy, let, let's dust off your, your knowledge about charging at EA, right? And she, yeah, absolutely. Cause I'm gonna spend $300 for three days of a, of a, of a car. So, so then there's no help at all this time with her. Zero. Zero help. Zero, nothing. So, so the problem is, this is where the problem is. If you pull into a rental car agency and they either try and bait and switch you into an EV or they truly are out of gas cars. Doubtful. Right, I agree with you. And you don't want to take a minivan, right? Okay, so so <laughs> they should do what when you're checking in? What did this woman do to educate us? Now, granted, she doesn't know that we're a well, little more than the average person knowledge wise with EVs, but you still like, you know, I was angry. All right. Here's why I'm angry. And I'm not even going to look at you. I'm going to talk to our friends out there. Here we go. Here's why I'm angry. I happen to know a little bit about EVs. Guess why? I have him and I have Kyle. So my life has been a big education in EVs. If I'm getting off an airplane, and I'm tired and it's after midnight and I've already reserved a car, I'm expecting the car I reserved. I know EVs, I could have reserved a Tesla, I could have reserved this Polestar. I didn't want an electric car because I know that I'm the one who has to return it and just for the few days I'm here, I don't even want to deal with charging a Tesla, which is, we all know, super quick and easy. But that's not the point. The point is, I know, let's pretend. I know nothing about EVs. I'm just the average person who gets off an airplane. I want my car. I've reserved my car. And they say to me at the counter, oh, we have an electric car for you. What does that mean? I don't, I don't know what to do with an electric car. Would I know what to do with an electric car if I didn't have you in my life? I would, would, would not, you know? Would you even no. know what, mean, what it means to return the car to 70% state of charge? No, forget that. I wouldn't even know how to get in it, how to start it how to find a charger, download an app, what app? I don't know what that means. What do I do when I get to the charger? I don't know how to plug it in. Where is the plug-in? What do I do? It's, it's just the simplest thing to really mess with somebody's head. I think I would have the worst time. I would have probably taken an Uber down to the condo and then figured it out from there. But I think about how many people they must have done this to and and the lack of education i i'm just so spun up about it and last night i mean it's late and i'm just angry and personally i know how to charge the car i still don't want to but i know how but i think about all the people they must have done this to and it's really outrageous and i think if if they're trying to turn people off into switching to an ev i think that's the way you do it just get a rental car here so what? Just go. Wow. Just the keys. Harley. So what? Have fun. What help? And by the way, the car smells like pot. Yeah. Side note. Well, can I just say that when we got in the car last night, I said to you, I said, this thing smells like somebody had a party in it, and and you said, oh no, that's probably just the cleaning I fluid. The cleaning fluid. And I was like, I, I, I don't know. And then we just got in it now. I'm like, Woo! And today I smell. You it. definitely smell it. So. 
That is not cool. Agreed. That is not cool. I think the service at the counter was completely unprofessional. I don't know that I blame the girl for not knowing how to explain what to do with the EV because every question you asked her, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So, and so we learned a lot about the management of these rental car companies. Right. So you're, you're, the, the issue is that the companies, the car, the rental car companies themselves are not giving enough training to their employees as to what to tell like they this could, is a safety issue well suppose i got the car from rsw and i had to be in miami this morning yeah and i just drove to miami i would have no charge i wouldn't know how to figure out that i needed a charge and i don't have the app and i i don't know how to find a charge and they didn't even give you like, like a piece of paper that says here is that now now the one thing because we do know the Polestar pretty well and it's got the Google Maps. Well you do. I've never no, been in a Polestar. I, I know, but but she said, Oh, if you go to Google Maps, because she will radioed someone, they say in addition to the charge point app, you can go to the you can go to the Google Maps in the car and that will tell you where the charging stations are. And you know the thing is So we it, tried that last Well, this night. is a fault that uh, not so much of Polestar, I'm um, of of Hertz or Thrifty or Dollar or whatever car company we rented this from. Yeah. Cuz to me they seem like they're all one and the same mm -hmm. and that's that's freaking confusing by itself. Who am I renting a car from? <laughs> is it Thrifty? Is it Dollar? Is it Hertz? Like I don't get it. If there's one brand of car rental agencies out there, then then say you're one brand and teach people when they're buying, when they're renting a car, give them a, give them a piece of paper that says, something. here's something. They do a great job when you actually proactively reserve a rental car. They did a, they did a terrible no, no, job. No, no, we did not reserve the rental car this time. I'm saying the first time when I reserved the Model Y from oh, Hertz. when you reserved When an you EV. reserve an EV. When you, when all of a sudden they bait and switch you into taking an EV, or if they say, hey, would you like to try an EV? There's no training. There's no piece of paper. There's nothing. You're, they're just handing you the keys. And I will tell you that I've seen so many people pull up to Tesla stations, not Magic Docs, with pole stars. Yeah. Even an EV6. When I was on the trip coming back with your Model Y and I was in Yuli, um, you know, Yuli, uh, Florida, some guy pulled up in a pole star. He was trying to charge on Tesla. Of course he and was. And it was in a rental. He, he didn't know what he was doing. Not his fault. Um, you know, Poor guy. No, and and even when I was in Kittery, Maine, a guy pulled up in a, uh, when I was with Katie in Maine, a guy pulled up in a Model 3, and he was trying to get to Portland, and he was he was trying to charge on an EA. And I was like, oh, do you have of the combo? He was. Do you have the combo one adapter? He goes, what's that? I go, oh, is this a rental? Yes. He was at a 65% state of charge. He didn't even understand what that meant. Right. And he was in a Tesla. I've said, dude, you can easily make it to Portland, Maine from Kittery. You're going to get there with like 50% state of charge left. It's not that far up the road. So, and, and it was a rental from Hertz. And the thing is that these rental car companies are doing a disservice to people whose first experience with, a, with an EV might be renting a car. And, and people are having bad experiences out there. So, so I, I also think it's, it's dangerous. I think, for example, like I just said, if I, they didn't know where I was going. So I'm going on a trip. I'm going to go across the state of Florida over to Miami. I yeah. would have run out of juice so in the middle of the night. There's just Thank no, you. well, this car, this car, first of all, when we got in it, it was at a hundred percent state of charge. I still don't know if that would have gotten me to Miami. It, it would have. South Miami? Yes. But not back. Not there and back. It, it, it would have because this car's got a, maybe a 200. And, not the point. Uh, okay. But but anyway, you would have had to charge at some point unless the hotel you were staying at had a charger in it. But the, but Would I know to charge I, at the hotel? No, they told us nothing. And then on top of that, we needed to both be on this car to be authorized drivers because I'm driving it now. But I'm returning. But when I go to the airport tomorrow and you drop me off, you've got to you've got to return the car on Monday, right? So they didn't tell us there was an extra charge for that. So I look at the bill. There's a fifty four dollar charge there. So look, I know it was twelve thirty at night. I don't really care about that. But these rental car companies need to do a better job of communicating when there's an upcharge. 
oh, if you move to the Tesla, that's fine. We have a Model 3, but that's going to cost you $111 more. Well, that's All the point. There was no sort of disclosure either. The, the <laughs> girl at the counter was just, oh, yeah, we have a Tesla, and then wrote up the paperwork for the Tesla until you looked at the price. Yeah. Oh, you can add another driver. And didn't say, well, that would, you know, there's something that, about but communication. You, and that, that's very that has, that, those two points has nothing to do with EVs. That's just yeah, common, that's, that's common business sense. And I do not fault the employee for this. I fault training at the corporate level because she was, she was very cordial. She was very nice. She was very professional. After she had a conversation for 10 minutes. Yeah, I know. I know. All right. So the lesson here is that if you are potentially going to be getting an e, a, a CCS car or, or even a Tesla car and you've never rented a car before, you're going to be in for a rude awakening here. This, it's almost like yeah. and this is not a dangerous situation. I think what happened last night potentially for someone else could have been a dangerous situation. But that's like me as a professional musician, as an educator. A kid comes to me and says, oh, I'd like to play the violin. I go, great, here's your violin. That's it. Yeah, go play it and go give a concert. Go ahead. What yeah, the heck? There's I no mean, training. There's no training, but I think these car companies, these rental companies, there is no doubt, and I hope somebody's listening from Thrifty and Hertz and Dollar and every rental car out there, if you're offering EVs. By the way, nothing to do with Dollar Rental Car, but Dollar General, that's for Katie. He's just trying to get me to laugh. No, I mean. But I'm really unhappy yeah. about what happened last night. Yeah. And I think, I don't think really it's about me because I know what to do, but I think about all the people this must happen to. So I hope that these companies out there, I hope somebody sends this video to someone because I can't be the only one disgusted with the process last night and the lack of education and the lack of help. I don't know what to do. What do I do? Do you know what to do? I can figure it out. You can, but the average person Only can't. Only because who I'm married to. Can I tell you one thing? In the in the Google Maps. Well, oh, that was the thing you started to say. Tell yeah, them about what I know. And the then you, 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 I'm a little scared over here. You cut me off there, woman. But, but in the Google Maps, which get it out of my system. Which is which is quite actually not terrible, in Polestar the implementation of this, but it shows you Tesla superchargers in the Polestar app. In fact, it were the first few that came up. Yeah, they're all Tesla charging Tesla options. charging options. But then in amber. Below it says, this incompatible. incompatible car. And I was talking to Brandon Flash. No, I was talking to uh, Max Patton about this. Both of them have owned uh, um, Polestar 2s, which by the way, different issue, not a bad car. I don't like the, the cockpit side, but it's smooth. I got the one with the 300 kilowatts. It's pretty quick. It's okay, quiet. I have a beef about this Polestar. What's the beef? There's a stupid cup holder. And everybody knows I'm all about cup holders. <laughs> well, There's one cup holder right here can't see it sorry but then where the armrest is here there's a super secret cup holder yeah stuck under there yeah. so if i want to put my my cup in here this thing stays up and jams dave's shoulder yeah uh, okay all right stupid design a anyway it's, it's not it's not not the greatest design but it's not it's we're not talking about the car here we're talking about the the rental experience and then how do you charge this car? And the fact that that Polestar on their implementation of Google Maps shows you Tesla ch superchargers. If you don't know anything about electric cars, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, Tesla. I oh, hear they've got the best network. I'll, just go there. I'll go there. Oh, it's really close. I can go. Right and, oh yeah, it's the closest one. I'll go there. And then it says like, is it fast? Or is it super medium, fast. super fast, fast, right. medium? Like, I think that's okay that they're trying to dumb it down for okay. someone. And that, that's okay. But don't list Tesla superchargers. And if I'm going to bolt, I'm going to go to the super fast. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Kathy. Sorry. You're going to go to, you're gonna go to a, a, a V3 Tesla that's in a bolt and do. try and plug in. And, um, yeah, so. What do I know? All right. So, listen. I think, I think <laughs> you've made your point. Sorry, um, it's just such a bad no, experience. No, I, I get it. I get it. Um, the cars. You know, it really upset me. Oh, I was I very upset last I night, know. and not really personally for everybody else out there. 
that has had to deal with the situation and and doesn't have the knowledge that we happen to have. See, the rental car outrageous. companies, to me, they are as much on the front lines of, of you know, helping people with their first EV experience, even more so in a lot of cases than dealerships. Because if I go to a dealership to look at uh, Polestar 2, that means I have an interest in EVs. In EVs. I've, chances are I've done some homework about it and all that. But if I just show up to the counter and I'm looking to get a gas car and they say, how about an EV? And they give me zero training? That's just not good. And it's gonna cause a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. And while I'm not out and there- go EV? I'm not really out there saying, advocating you should buy EV. I'm just saying that these are the little speed bumps that the industry can get better. And the industry here I'm talking to are the rental car companies. You have to do a better job. There's no doubt. This is not a one-off. Um, there are a lot of people out there that I see at, whether it's EA or even Tesla, that are trying to charge CCS cars and they're in rentals and they have no clue. And, and let's just think about why do people rent a car? They've flown in from somewhere, they have to get to somewhere else. So now you have to spend your time figuring out what to do. How yeah. do I charge this car? How now, do I get from A to B? Now, I don't know. the one thing that, that, to the credit of this rep from Hertz said, is that, look, if you don't return the car what's at 70%, that's okay. We're just going to charge you $35. But that's not the point. But do you the even, point is, suppose I had to drive further than, which I than do. the range of the car. Because i got to go up to the airport. Yep. Then I'm going to come back. Then I'm going to go back I understand. to the airport. You have, to, have charge. to charge. You have to car. charge. Right. And and I, and I get that. But, but she did at least say... That she was zero help. She didn't understand. I asked her, "What do you mean plug share? Like it, plug share? No." Then she radioed someone. Then they said, "Use the app in the car. It'll tell you where to go." And it kind of does. If you know what you're looking. If you know for. what you're looking for. Otherwise, but then when you get there, it. like let's say you go to a charge point, or you go to an EV Go, or you go to a te or you go to a an EA. Each one of those requires a different app. It, not all of them have credit card readers. And when it's you a, show up to an EA, does it say download the app when you arrive? Or do you have to like hope that somebody pulls up next to you there, and say, I don't There are different there are different ways that you can activate a charger and, and a lot of the EAs have credit card readers on them. So you don't um, need an app, you can just put in your credit card? Yeah. 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 And then and then when when I was in the process of renting the Tesla I said, okay, how are you gonna, how do I pay for it? Like, I know how to charge a, a CCS car because um, I'll just pull up an EA app and I have an account and the whole bit. Um, so no problem with me charging this car. But if I had the Tesla, I said, all right, because there's plug and charge on that car. Where is that? She said, oh, that'll get billed to us. All right. Right? So she didn't under, she didn't explain that when I'm we went back to the Polestar. Yeah, I know. She didn't explain to us that when we went back to the Polestar, that you're not going to be able to just plug it in and it'll get billed to the car rental company who then will put it on our credit card. There's a different mechanism there. Look, it, it's it's a little bit of a challenge right now because of the two different standards. There's Betamax and there's VHS, right? There's CCS and there's NAX and it's confusing. And I do give the rental car companies credit for putting EVs out there so that people can use them. But I definitely don't give them credit for training people, especially when it's not planned out. Thanks for watching another episode of Out of Spec Dave. We'll catch you on the next one, perhaps in a rental car. We'll see you.